Hi everyone, this is Professor M. Das Science, and today I want to discuss the density operator for pure states in another one of our videos on rigorous quantum mechanics. In the videos looking at the postulate of quantum mechanics, we have characterized quantum systems using state vectors called kets. Today, I want to introduce an alternative, but completely equivalent way of doing quantum mechanics, the density operator. The density operator will make your life much easier when dealing with advanced topics such as quantum statistical mechanics. So without further ado, let's go. As an introduction to the density operator, today I will only consider pure states. So let me start with a reminder on what the distinction between pure and mixed states is. As always, you can find further details in the videos linked in the description. Simply put, a pure state describes a quantum system whose state is perfectly known. For example, in the videos on the postulate of quantum mechanics, we have been working with pure states, although in that case we haven't used this language because there was no need there for the distinction. It is important to understand that in quantum mechanics, full knowledge of a state has a probabilistic dimension. For example, imagine we have an observable A with its eigenvalue equation given by this. In this equation, the ui are the eigenstates and the lambda i are the eigenvalues. We can always write the pure state psi of the system in the basis spanned by the u eigenstates like this, and the expansion coefficients c are given by the bracket between u and psi and are called the representation of psi in the u basis. From postulate 4 of quantum mechanics, we know that when we measure property a, then the probability of obtaining eigenvalue lambda i as the outcome of the measurement is given by the absolute value of c i squared, where for simplicity I'm assuming a non-degenerate eigenvalue. So in this sense, quantum mechanics is a probabilistic theory. However, a state like psi is a pure state because this is all we can know about a quantum state. Quantum mechanics tells us precisely how to determine the coefficient c at any given time, how to then calculate their time evolution using the Schrodinger equation, and the exact probability of obtaining any given outcome of a measurement as shown here. Now let's remember what mixed states are. Mixed state is used to describe a system for which we only have incomplete information about the state. This is a feature that also exists in the classical world and is unrelated to the probabilistic nature of pure states in quantum mechanics. For example, when we have a macroscopic system with a number of particles of the order of Avogadro's number, it is impossible to fully characterize the system, be it classically or quantum mechanically. What we do in this case is to use probability in the context of a statistical mechanics. For example, a system at thermodynamic equilibrium at temperature T has a probability of being in a state of energy E proportional to the exponential of minus E over KBT, where remember KB is Boltzmann's constant. A mixed state in quantum mechanics is a state for which we only have partial information in this sense. For example, the state could be psi1 with probability P1, psi2 with probability P2, and so on, and of course we must have that the sum over the different probabilities must add to 1. Each of these psi1, psi2, and so on are pure states, so each has a quantum mechanical probability associated with it as described up here. But the point of mixed state is that we don't know in which of these pure states our system is. This is precisely where the p probabilities come in. These p probabilities are independent of quantum mechanics, the same happens in classical systems where we only have partial information. Today I will introduce the density operator in the context of pure states only. We will see that in this case it leads to an equivalent formalism to that of state vectors. However, to see the full power of the density operator, you should check out the video on how to use it for mixed states. To introduce the density operator, let's consider a basis U of our state space and we choose it to be orthonormal. We can write a general state vector as a cat psi and expand it in the U basis as sum over i, ci, ui. For a pure state such as psi here, we define the density operator rho as the outer product of psi with itself. I want to emphasize that this definition is only valid for pure states. At this point, if you have seen the video on projection operators, you will immediately recognize this operator rho as the projector onto the state psi, and indeed for pure states these two operators are the same. Just like we wrote the state psi above in the u basis, we now want to write the density operator rho in the u basis. Remember that to write an operator in a particular basis, we have to calculate its matrix elements, rho ij. They are equal to ui rho uj. Plugging in the definition of rho, we get ui psi psi uj. And then this term is simply the coefficient of psi written in the u basis, ci. And this term is the complex conjugate of the cj coefficient, so that we get ci cj star. 
you will notice that the state vector psi here and the density operator here contain the same information. This becomes particularly clear when these two objects are written in the U basis, as we can see that the state vector is essentially represented by these expansion coefficients ci, and so is the density operator. We know that the matrix formulation of quantum mechanics is a very useful way of doing quantum mechanics, and in that formulation we write the state vector as usual as a column vector of ci coefficients. The density operator is of course an operator, so in the matrix formulation it is written down as a matrix of ci cj star coefficients. What I want to show in the rest of this video is that we can do quantum mechanics in terms of state vectors, like I do for example in the videos on the postulates of quantum mechanics, but we can also do quantum mechanics in a completely analogous manner in terms of the density operator. For pure states, using state vectors is usually the simpler option, so you may think that we're just making our lives harder by introducing the density operator. However, for mixed states, the simpler formalism is the one in terms of the density operator, so for this reason it is important to become familiar with both. Let's look at some properties of the density operator. The first is that it is Hermitian, rho dagger equals rho. This is very easy to see as rho dagger equals psi psi dagger. Remember that the adjoint of an outer product simply exchanges the order of the terms, which in this case simply gives psi psi again, and this is rho. The second property is that the density operator is idempotent, which means rho squared equals rho. Again, this is trivial to see as rho squared equals the outer product of psi multiplied with itself, this bracket in the middle gives 1, so we get the outer product, which equals rho. This property, which you'll remember is the defining property of a projection operator, is true for a pure state, because the density operator is simply projection operator in this case. However, this is no longer true for a mixed state, and consequently this property is not obeyed by mixed states. A third interesting property of the density operator is that there is no global phase ambiguity. Consider state psi. The corresponding density operator rho equals the outer product of psi with itself. Now consider another state psi prime, which equals e to the i theta times psi. We know that multiplying a state vector by a global phase like this doesn't affect any physical predictions, so we always have this phase ambiguity when working with state vectors where we need to make a phase choice. If we construct the corresponding density matrix rho prime, we get e to the i theta times the outer product of psi with psi times e to the minus i theta. The two exponentials combine to give 1, so we get the outer product of psi psi, and this means that rho prime equals rho. So there is no global phase ambiguity when working in terms of the density operator. What I want to do in the rest of the video is to look at how we can calculate the usual quantities we work with in quantum mechanics in terms of the density operator rather than in terms of the state vector. Let's start with normalization. For state vectors, normalization says that the bracket of psi with psi equals 1. We write in the bracket, in the u representation this becomes sum over i, ci star, and the bra ui multiplying sum over j, cj, and the ket uj. We can move the sums to the beginning, and we obtain the double sum over ij of ci star, cj, and the bracket between ui and uj. As the u basis is orthonormal, we get delta ij here, which reduces the double sum to a single sum over i of the absolute value of ci squared. Now how can we ensure that the density operator corresponds to a normalized state? First, using this result up here for the matrix elements of the density operator, note that the diagonal elements of the density matrix rho ii are equal to the absolute value of ci squared. For starters, this shows that the diagonal entries of the density matrix, written in the u basis, tell us the probability of measuring the system to be in the corresponding ui state. But going to the normalization condition, we have from above that 1 equals the sum over i of ci squared. Given this relation, we can rewrite it as sum over i of rho ii. Remembering that the sum of the diagonal elements of a matrix is its trace, then we can rewrite this as the trace over the density operator rho. So what does this mean? We can write the normalization condition in terms of state vectors, as the bracket of the state vector with itself, or in terms of the trace of the density operator. These two expressions are equivalent. The next thing I want to consider are physical properties, and remember that in quantum mechanics they are represented by operators. A quantum system is fully specified by the expectation values of a complete set of commuting observables, so what we want to show is that we can build the expectation value of an observable in terms of the density operator. Let's start with a reminder about how we calculate the expectation value of an observable A in terms of state vectors. 
We calculate it as bra psi operator a get psi. To convert this to the u basis, we first insert two identity operators like this. Then we insert the resolution of the identity in the u basis as usual. And we can then rearrange the expression, moving the sums to the beginning and ending up with these three terms. The first is ci star. The second is the matrix element of the operator a in the u basis. And the third is cj. Putting this together and reordering the terms for convenience, we get sum over ij of ci star cj aij. To see how we can rewrite this in terms of the density operator, let's write again the expectation value of a as equal to this expression we got here, so we have this. Each of these three terms is a scalar, so we can move the uj psi term to the front, and we get this. Remembering the definition of the density operator, we see that the outer product of psi with itself here is equal to rho. So we can rewrite this expression in terms of the density operator like this. We can then move the sum over i to this point here, because uj and rho don't explicitly depend on i. And we get sum over j, uj rho, then the sum over i of the outer products of ui ui, and then a uj. This sum here is simply the resolution of the identity, so we can rewrite the whole expression as sum over j, uj, the operator product of rho with a, uj. This quantity here is now simply the matrix element of the operator product of rho with a, so this is again the sum of the diagonal entries of the matrix rho a, and we can rewrite this as a trace over rho a. So what does this mean? We can write the expectation value of an observable a in terms of a state vectors as the bracket between the state vector with a acting on the state vector, or in terms of the trace of the product of the density operator with the operator a. These two expressions are equivalent. As a quick aside, how can we determine the probability of a measurement outcome for a physical property in terms of the density operator? Remember from the video on measurements that to do this we need to consider the eigenvalue equation of the operator a acting on eigenstate a and i, giving eigenvalue a n and eigenstate a n i, where as usual the i runs from 1 to g n and labels the degeneracies of eigenvalue a n. The only possible outcomes of a measurement of observable a are one of its eigenvalues a n, and the probability of measuring eigenvalue a n if we have a state psi can be written as the expectation value of the projection operator p n with respect to state psi, where the projection operator projects onto the g n dimensional subspace spanned by the eigenstate of the eigenvalue a n. This is simply an expectation value, so we can use the result we just derived up here to rewrite this probability as the trace of the product of the density operator rho with the projection operator p n. So this is how we predict the probability of the outcome of a measurement using the density operator. We now know how to characterize the properties of a quantum state in terms of the density operator. All that is left to do is the time evolution of the quantum state. Remember that the time evolution in terms of state vectors is governed by the Schrodinger equation, i h bar, derivative with respect to time of psi t, all equal to the Hamiltonian acting on psi t. To understand the time evolution in terms of the density operator, first consider the time derivative of rho. This is equal to the time derivative of the outer product of psi t with itself by the definition of the density operator. Using the chain rule, we find that this gives two terms, the derivative of the first times the second, plus the first term times the derivative of the second. This derivative is the one that appears in the Schrodinger equation, so we can write it as equal to 1 over i h bar multiplying the Hamiltonian acting on the state psi. By contrast, this term is the derivative of the bra, so we need to rewrite this expression in the joule space like this. Remember that to go to the joule space we need the complex conjugate, hence the minus sign here. In general we also get the adjoint of the operator here, but in this case we can use the original Hamiltonian because it is a Hermitian operator. We're now ready to evaluate the time derivative of the density operator. Inserting the expression for the derivative of the ket into this term here, we get this. And inserting the expression of the derivative of the bra into this term here, we get this second term. These two outer products are simply the density operator. So we can rewrite this expression as 1 over i h bar h rho minus rho h. Finally, this is equal to 1 over i h bar and the commutator of the Hamiltonian with rho. So what does this mean? 
We can write the time evolution of a quantum system in terms of the time evolution of state vectors, as given by the Schrodinger equation, or in terms of the time evolution of the density operator, as given by this equation. These two expressions are equivalent. Overall, we have seen that we can do quantum mechanics for pure states in two equivalent ways. The first is in terms of state vectors, as shown by the expressions in the first column, and the second is in terms of the density operator, as shown by the expressions in the second column. The density operator provides an equivalent language to quantum mechanics to that of the state vector. So what is the point of introducing an alternative way of doing quantum mechanics? As an introduction, Today we only covered pure states for which state vectors and the density operator are largely equivalent. To really appreciate the power of the density operator, what you should do next is to check the videos where we use it to study mixed states. Those from the basis of quantum statistical mechanics that allows us to study macroscopic systems using quantum physics. If you liked the video or would like to send me suggestions for future videos, please subscribe.